जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरिवर धारे गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरिवर धारे यशोदनंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोदनंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोदनंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोदनंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यमुना तीरा वन चारी यमुना तीरा वन चारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी <coughs> जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरिवर धारी जय गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरिवर धारी यशोदनंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोदनंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोदनंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यशोदनंदन ब्रज जन रंजन यमुना तीरा वन चारी
यमुना तीरा बन चारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी 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 जय ओम विष्णुपाद परम हंस परिवराज कचार्य स्त्रोतर शत श्री श्रीमद हिस्स डिवाइन ग्रेस एसी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी महाराज श्रील प्रभुपाद की जय जय ओम विष्णुपाद परम हंस परिवराज कचार्य स्त्रोतर शत श्री श्रीमद हिस्स डिवाइन ग्रेस श्रील भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती गोस्वामी महाराज प्रभुपाद की जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जय नाम आचार्य श्रील हरिदास ठाकुर की जय प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवास गौर भक्त वृंद की जय श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंड राधा कुंड गिरी गोवर्धन की जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जय श्री जगन्नाथपुरी धाम की जय श्री मायापुर नवदीप धाम की जय हरिनाम संकीर्तन की जय ऑल ग्लोरीज टू द असेंबल डिवोटीज ऑल ग्लोरीज टू द असेंबल डिवोटीज ऑल ग्लोरीज टू द असेंबल डिवोटीज ऑल ग्लोरीज ऑल ग्लोरीज ऑल ग्लोरीज टू श्री गुरु एंड श्री गौरंग ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोतम दें सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर नष्ट प्रायेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवति नैष्टिकी कृष्णाय वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंद गोपकुमाराय गोविंदाय नमो नमः सो वी आर रीडिंग फ्रॉम कैंटो वन चैप्टर एट टेक्स्ट नंबर थर्टी एट केवयम नाम यदु सह पांडव 
भवतो दर्शनम्यर्हि ऋषि कानामिवेशितु केवयम नाम रूपाभ्याम यदुभिः सह पांडवः भवतो दर्शनम यर्हि ऋषि कानामिवेशितु केवयम नाम रूपाभ्याम यदुभिः सह पांडवः भवतो दर्शनम यर्हि ऋषि कानामिवेशितु यदु भी सह पांडवः भवतो दर्शनम यरहि ऋषि का नाम विवेशित हो केवयम नाम रूपाभ्याम यदु भी सह पांडवः भवतो दर्शनम यरहि ऋषि का नाम विवेशित हो केवयम नाम रूपाभ्याम यदु भी सह पांडवः भवतो दर्शनम यरहि श्री कानाम विवेशित हो माता जी वर्ड टू वर्ड मीनिंग के हु आर वयम वी नाम रूपाभ्याम विदाउट फेम एंड एबिलिटी यदु भी विद यदुस सह along with pandavaha and the pandavas bhavatah your adarshanam absence yarhi as if rishi ka naam of the senses eva like ishituhu of the living being translation and purport by shila prabhupad as the name and fame of a particular body is finished with the disappearance of the living spirit similarly if you do not look upon us all our fame and activities along with the pandavas and yadus will end at once <clears throat> Kunti Devi is quite aware that the existence of the Pandavas is due to Sri Krishna only. The Pandavas are undoubtedly well established in name and fame and are guided by the great king Yudhishthir who is morality personified. And the Yadus are undoubtedly great allies. But without the guidance of Lord Krishna all of them are non entities as much as the senses of the body are useless without the guidance of consciousness no one should be proud of his prestige power and fame without being gu- guided by the favor of the supreme lord the living beings are always dependent and the ultimate dependable object is the lord himself we may therefore invent by our advancement of material knowledge all sorts of 
counteracting material resources. But without being guided by the Lord, all such inventions end in fiasco, however strong and stout the reactionary elements may be. <clears throat> Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Kurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupahakada Mahiyam Dadati Sapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Uta Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchan Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Brishabhanu Sute Devi Pranavami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpata Rupyascha Kripa Sindhupya Evacha Patita Nam Pavane Pyo Vaishnava Pyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna <clears throat> So Queen Kunti is offering her love to Krishna in the form of uh, these beautiful prayers and uh, this is the culmination of all knowledge to know Krishna as he is and this is the culmination in the sense that she has recognized that all her good fortune or all her family's good fortune and whatever else they have received or blessed with, it is all by Krishna's grace, ultimately. And without His will, as His Holiness Radhanath Maharaj once mentioned, we cannot even breathe without the will of Krishna. That's how much we are dependent on Krishna. And uh, when that dependence is 100%, then Krishna can put enough ingredients in the air to keep us healthy, even if we don't eat. And we find that example uh, in the 11th canto, when Maharaj Yadu, he sees that uh, uh, there is one avaduta and he doesn't even make an effort to go and fetch his food but still he is healthy and stout 
because he was completely absorbed in Krishna. We have the example of the six Goswamis. Just by their absorption in Krishna, they could rise above the bodily platform. And uh, same thing we find in the life of Srila Prabhupada. People when they travel abroad, when they come back, there is a problem called jet lag. But we never hear of Prabhupada uh, having that same problem, ever. Wherever he would go, he would follow the same schedule as per that time zone. So to realize that whatever we have, and be very convinced internally about it, is the ultimate knowledge. And this is called complete surrender and complete dependence. To ever think that I have some ability or I accomplish something uh, based on my intelligence, my ability, is a covered form of atheism. That we are defying Krishna's authority and uh, its lack of uh, gratitude and lack of real knowledge. To ever think even a little bit, externally sometimes people might say, oh it's all Krishna's grace, all glories to Guru and Gauranga. But internally, more than externally, internally we have to be very very convinced that whatever we have, whatever talents, expertise, intelligence, it's all by Krishna's grace. And to that degree we are convinced about this one principle, to that very degree Krishna will manifest his mercy, his grace through us. So, as Srila Prabhupada said, we have to be like postmen, just delivering Krishna's mercy. And uh, one of the most important things we can do is to not be an impediment between Krishna and other people. And that can only happen when we are convinced about this principle, that we are simply existing because of Krishna's grace. And then that grace will flow. As soon as there is that arrogance, false pride, oh, I have done something, I am so intelligent, I am able to do this, I am able to do that, then that's like uh, an impediment. And Krishna's grace, uh, it's an obstacle for Krishna's grace to reach other people. Kunti Devi, being a highly, highly devoted lady, she is fully convinced. And Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita Janayati Asu Vairagyam Jnanam Chayat Ahetukam. So, anybody who is devoted to Lord Krishna, Lord Vasudeva, two things automatically manifest devotion and detachment, sorry, knowledge and detachment. And we see both things in the prayers of Queen Kunti. She also prays that let my attachment to the Vrishnis, to my family members be gone. And let my affection for you flow like the Ganges flows forever towards the ocean. She doesn't even want any attachment to the Pandavas. That doesn't mean that she wants to give up her duties as a mother. So detachment doesn't generally mean, which people think, that insensitiveness. So externally a person keeps doing his or her duties nicely, but internally being detached. And that's what Krishna continuously talks about throughout the Gita. Externally doing our duties very attentively, internally uh, cultivating attachment to Krishna. So at no point we are expected to give up our duties in fact, Arjuna wanted to give up, but Krishna never encouraged that. But uh, the attachment is the goal. The goal is not detachment. If somebody is already attached to Krishna, he doesn't need to practice detachment separately, because the goal of detachment is attachment to Krishna. And if somebody is already attached, there is no need for detaching himself from the world, or the worldly duties, obligations. Why do we... Why do the scriptures recommend there should be detachment, detachment, detachment? Because people are wrongly engaged. So unless they are disengaged from that particular occupation, they cannot turn their attention to Krishna. The goal of detachment is 
turning our attention to Krishna, if somebody is already paying attention to Krishna, then we don't need to uh, practice any detachment, because the goal is already reached. So Kunti Devi, because she is extremely devoted, she is a pure devotee, so therefore all the knowledge and detachment is already manifest in her personality. No separate endeavor is required. And this is the highest truth. Yes, Krishna is the cause of all causes. As Lord Brahma explains in the Brahma Samhita, Sarva Karan Karanam. Ultimately, Krishna is the cause of whatever we accomplish. If somebody says, oh, but I did it with my intelligence, like many times people who don't have faith in God, I did it with my own ability, my intelligence, my expertise. But who gave us that intelligence and ability and expertise? Who gave us this body itself? So, and even if we say, okay, we did it. But what if Krishna does not have a system where he rewards us for all the good work that we do? What if he behaves like a boss, where we just, we just keep working, 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 and there are no rewards? So even if we say we have achieved based on our hard work, still, uh, but the rewards are in Krishna's hands. So there was a, uh, a company, an organization, the office building one day, one employee was standing outside the building and the boss entered in his new car. And the employee was like, his mouth was open, eyes became big. And the boss came out happily smiling, he said, wow, sir, new car. So the boss, uh, he smiled again and he put his hand on his shoulder. He said, see, agar tu aur mehnat se kaam karega, if you work harder, or dusron ko bhi inspire karega to work harder, or overtime karega, if you do overtime and don't ask for extra money, to the employee goes, yes sir, to agle saal, the employee is becoming more excited, the boss says, isse bhi achhi gaadi lunga mein. So, what if Krishna becomes a boss like this? He has the ability, <laughs> but the rewards are also in Krishna's hands, he rewards. So everything ultimately boils down to this one principle. And all the scriptures are meant to bring us to this one point only. That everything I am because of Krishna's mercy, I am existing because of Krishna's grace. So what to speak of us? We see the system within the material creation, even the powerful personalities like Brahma and Shiva, Indra, the powerful rulers of the universe, they are also dependent on Krishna. Even they cannot resolve every issue. There is a system, yes, Indra is in charge. When he cannot handle something, he has to go to Lord Brahma. If they can't resolve anything, they can go to Lord Shiva. And even Lord Shiva sometimes takes them to Lord Vishnu, who is Krishna's manifestation in this world to maintain. So, ultimately, it's Krishna's will that reigns supreme, and whatever he desires happens, not what we desire. We can simply desire but the ability and the facilities to fulfill that those desires also come from Krishna through material nature, which is created by him, which is his energy. Earth, water, fire, air, ether, everything in this world is made up of these five things. And three subtle elements, mind, intelligence and ego. And there's nothing beyond these eight. Everything within the material creation is manifesting out of these, a combination of these. And uh, whose energies are these? Who has created all this? Krishna. So everything ultimately is coming from Krishna. 
So does that mean that we have to live in depression? Oh, uh, I am useless. I am nothing. No, we have to live in humility. There is a difference between humility and depression. In humility also, a person thinks, oh, I am nothing. I am fallen. I am small, insignificant. In depression also, a person might think like that. So somebody might just mistake depression to be humility or hum humility to be depression. But there is one difference. In depression, a person is only becoming more and more self-conscious. I am nothing, I am useless, I am insignificant. But humility, oh, I am nothing, I am insignificant, I am fallen, but Krishna is great. So humility gives hope. And humility encourages us, humility inspires us, depression discourages. So humility means I am nothing, but Krishna is great. And uh, all we have to do is not that, oh, everything belongs to Krishna, so my house is Krishna's, my ability, my talents, yes, my money is Krishna's. So we don't have to give up all this. What needs to be given up is the enjoying mentality, that all this glory, all this opulence is mine, that it belongs to me. The only thing that Krishna expects us to do is acknowledge the hand that feeds us. So even people like Brahma, greatest personality after the Supreme Lord within the universe. Now he is born directly from Garbhodakshai Vishnu. Brahma is directly the son of God. And he is born from his from a lotus which sprouts from Lord Garbhodakshai's uh, navel. And Brahma is the first created being within the universe. And he is born directly from the Supreme Lord. Still he was not able to figure out as to what he was supposed to do, what was the cause of his birth and what, what are his duties. He went down the stem of the lotus, the universal lotus, and he couldn't find anything. It was darkness and the waves of the Garbodak ocean were scary, so he came up. Again sat back on the top, top of the lotus and seeing his eagerness, he was trying to figure out what is this happening, what am I supposed to do, what is my goal of life. And that's when he hears the two letters, ta and pa, tapa. So Brahma had to do tapasya, and because of which Krishna appeared in front of him. And only when Krishna revealed, and when he did tapasya, as per the instructions he received through hearing, then he was able to see everything. There was Lord Garbhodakshai Vishnu below, and he could see his navel, the lotus is coming out. He could see everything, he could see Krishna, he could see Golok Vrindavan and he composed beautiful prayers. So everything was there but he wasn't able to see until Krishna revealed everything. And uh, it's not that uh, Brahma is not capable uh, of seeing, he has four heads, that means eight eyes. So those eyes were not enough. Four his body is made up of intelligence element and four heads means four brains also. It's quite intelligent. But even he was not able to figure out unless he received Krishna's grace. Only by Krishna's mercy everything was revealed. Because he followed his instruction. By tapasya we cannot get the knowledge. Only by pleasing Krishna. And he did that tapasya to please Krishna, intention was to please Krishna, intention was to follow what he heard, the instruction, do tapa. And therefore he was able to witness Krishna's glory. And that to the supreme glory, where he situated in Golok Vrindavan. So this is the uh, end of all knowledge. And there is nothing beyond this. 
to realize that at every moment we are dependent on Krishna and everything that we have, everything is by Krishna's grace. So that is the meaning of the word, all glories to Krishna. Externally, people might be glorifying us for our achievements, but internally, and that's something that comes along in devotional service, because as Srila Prabhupada writes in the uh, Bhagavad Gita, one purport, he says, Krishna is the master of six opulences, wealth, beauty, strength, fame, renunciation, and fame. So when someone becomes a devotee, Krishna starts exchanging these opulences with the devotee. And it's a fact. So, these things will come and the more we advance, the more it becomes difficult to tolerate these things when they come. Materialistic people, when these things come, they become ecstatic. But devotees become uh, more and more humble, that they are getting something that they don't deserve. And at the same time, it becomes very difficult to tolerate it because they are fully convinced nothing is theirs. So the more we advance, the more we develop this consciousness. Externally tolerating all this, but internally be very, very convinced and fixed in the truth. Once one great saint was uh, distributing charity. So, but when he would distribute charity, um, he was a grihastha, he was distributing charity, people would come, but he would give charity with his head down, not looking at the faces of those who were receiving charity, and he was giving like this. Now that's not a very uh, civilized way of uh, dealing with someone. Imagine if he wants some food or something from someone, and somebody gives like this, or face turned away or turned down. Uh, we would rather not take it. So another saint of the time, he wrote to him, what kind of charity are you giving? You're putting your head down, you're not even looking at them as if not paying attention. So this saint replied, said, how can I look at their faces? So I feel embarrassed, I feel ashamed while giving charity, because there is that uh, feeling that I am giving charity. He said, because this is not mine. This money doesn't belong to me. And whatever I'm distributing is not mine. Still I have, the, I have the audacity to think that I am doing some good work and I am giving some money, I am giving some charity to someone. So this is the uh, state of consciousness the pure devotees have. And to the degree we are dear to Krishna and, to, and when we deviate from this consciousness, soon Krishna will rectify. To the degree we are dear to Krishna, uh, to that degree Krishna will rectify our wrong mentality and our wrong behavior immediately. Like in the case of Indra, he sometimes forgets. Upon his request, Krishna comes down. To this world. He was the one who went along with Mother Bhumi and other demigods, Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva and Krishna said he would appear. Or Lord Vishnu actually made a, a declaration that this time Krishna will personally appear as the son of Vasudeva and Devaki. So it's upon uh, Indra's request he was troubled by people like Kamsa, Jarasandha, and uh, when Krishna is in Vrindavan, he stops one Indra Yagya and Indra wants to destroy him only because he was puffed up. So Krishna humbles him, but Indra does not learn a lesson. When Krishna is in Dwarka, Narad Muni, who is expert at uh, in increasing the sweetness of Krishna's pastimes, he gives one flower, Parijat flower, heavenly 
flower to Rukpini. And after he does that, he immediately goes to Satyabhama. <laughs> Actually, he gives it to Krishna, and Krishna hands it over to Mother Rukmini. And immediately Narada Muni goes to Mother Satyabhama. Uh, you know what Krishna did? <laughs> there is a heavenly flower that he has gifted to Rukmini. <laughs> and this is a transcendental uh, competition which increases the rasa. And all this is enacted to increase Krishna's pleasure. They have different moods. All the devotees in Goloka also, they have different moods. And it is all uh, for the satisfaction of Krishna. Like, uh, one would wonder, why would Krishna have somebody like, why would we have somebody like Jatila and Kutila in the spiritual world? Who are always instigating uh, others against Radharani, against Krishna. But that just to increase Krishna's pastimes, Radha Krishna's pastimes. So different devotees take up those roles. So Mother Satya Bhama is like that. So she had that controlling attitude. Transcendently, she would try and control Krishna, and Krishna would act that way as if he was scared of Satya Bhama. So Satya Bhama was informed by Narad Muni. This is what Krishna has done. He has gifted a heavenly flower to Mother Rukmini. And Narad Muni has a way of saying things. So the person automatically starts thinking, even if there is nothing in his or her mind. And then when he sees, uh, oh, he, he studies the facial expression of the person, when the thing is done, Narayana, Narayana, and he leaves. <laughs> so, Mother Satya Bhama, when Krishna comes back home, because there were 16,108 palaces in Dwarka, and Krishna, for 16,108 queens, and Krishna was present with each queen simultaneously. He can do that. So, and this is a, uh, something which is uh, unbelievable. Uh, truth about Krishna, people can't imagine. Like once I was in a program, so there was one man sitting in a big sofa, and he was, he was as big as a sofa, and sitting like a king, and <laughs> and he's, at the end of it, he's asking, Aapne shadi nahi ki? It's like full, everybody's hearing. He said, nahi. I said, no, we, we haven't got married. Are Krishna ne to itni ki thi, sola hazar ek so aat. Mene ka wo sambhal sakte the. So, wo bhagwan hai, sola hazar sola karod bhi kar sakte. So, this is a great wonder for people, 16,108. What to speak of, uh, if we tell them Krishna was dancing with billions of gopis in Ras Leela. Unbelievable concept. So unless people have faith, devotion, they can't appreciate this. So devotees become ecstatic when they hear about Krishna's uh, great adventures. And those who are not devotees, they, they doubt. But if somebody is God, uh, why can't they accomplish all these uh, tasks? Therefore, one of the names of Krishna is Urukrama, one who performs Herculean tasks, adbhut, wonderful tasks, wonderful activities. So Mother Satya Bhama is told, and she, no, I was mentioning Krishna was living with all the 16,108 queens simultaneously, and each of the queens thought that Krishna never left them. That is how Krishna was satisfying them. And then, when it was time to go to the court, the assembly hall at Dwarka, all the 16,108 Krishnas will, would come out their, of their palaces, they would all become one. And then Krishna would enter the assembly hall, Sudharma. And in the evening, after the meetings and uh, all the management, he would come back and become 16,108 again and enter each of the palaces. So Mother Satya Bhama was convinced that Krishna is totally controlled by her and Krishna also acted that way. 
because he's bound by a devotee's love. And then Krishna said, all right, what to speak of a flower, I'll get you the whole tree. He called Garuda, they went to the heavenly planets and everything belongs to Krishna. So, Bhuktaram Yagya Tapsam Sarva Loka Maheshwaram He tells in the Bhagavad Gita. And he's not, he's not supposed to ask anyone. He just picks up a tree, Parijat tree, and Satyabhama is happy. I got the entire tree. And they're leaving and Indra attacks. Some time back, he was humbled by Krishna when he had become proud. And now again he attacks Krishna. Why is he taking our property away? So this is what happens when somebody is materially attached. I, me and mine. So devtas are not free from this. But again and again, Krishna teaches him a lesson. He humbles him. And uh, But if you study Bhagavatam, Bhagavatam talks about Indra's faults only. And one might start thinking, why is he sitting up on the throne of the king of heavens then? Itna mistake karta hai. But Bhagavatam is uh, meant for the exclusive glorification of Krishna. And it is there to show that except Krishna, everyone has faults, some fault or some limitation. And that's why the faults of even Brahma or Shiva or Indra have also been highlighted. But Indra is otherwise a great personality. He has done a lot of good work. He is the ruler of the universe and nobody can become Indra just like that unless someone is very, very qualified. The Lord chooses. And the Lord chooses in such a way that once he makes somebody the Indra, he remains Indra for the entire duration of Brahma's one day. And even if somebody tries to take away his kingdom, the Lord personally intervenes. Whatever the Lord has decided uh, will happen. The Lord decides that this person is going to be Indra for the entire day of Brahma then he will stay as Indra. Even if his pure devotees try to intervene, like Bali Maharaj is a pure devotee, he took, a, took over the heavens. But Krishna said, no, let him be Indra, you become Indra in the next millennium. I'll give you a better kingdom than the heavens. So he resolved everything. So Krishna is somebody who resolves everything nicely. He has the great, all the intelligence, abilities, expertise ultimately come from him and that is the meaning of the aphorism Athato Brahma Jigyasa Sorry, Janmadi Asiyataha Supreme Lord is the one from whom everything emanates Everything comes from God And Krishna is that God The scriptures clearly define So, the classic example of how uh, Everything that we have or achieve is by Krishna's mercy, Arjuna himself, the closest associate of Krishna. In the battlefield of Kurukshetra, he defeated the most powerful warriors within the universe. People like Bhishma, who could defeat Parshuram. Krishna had even uh, conquered the celestials like Gandharvas. He defeated them. Krishna could, uh, Arjuna, sorry. Arjuna equaled Shiva in fighting. And Lord Shiva came to test him. And in the battlefield of Kurukshetra, he killed the most powerful warriors. Karna, Bhishma, Chaitrat. But we all know when we read Mahabharata, it's easy for us to know now, but when Arjuna was there, Mahabharata was not written. So it was, sometimes he would feel that he was the one who actually accomplished everything because of him and they won the great battle, the great war. But later he realized who was the doer. When the Yadu dynasty disappeared from this planet as per Krishna's arrangement and Krishna also disappeared the queens at Dwarka, they were unprotected. So Yudhishthira Maharaj sent Arjun 
to bring the queens to Hastinapur. And while Arjuna was uh, bringing them back, some cowherd men with simple sticks, they attacked. And they took the queens away. And Arjuna had the same Gandhi bow, same weapons. He was the same Arjun who had fought against millions of soldiers single-handedly in Kurukshetra. He was not able to save the queens from these simple cowherd men. So Krishna showed him. That's when Arjuna actually realized on whose strength he was able to accomplish so much. These cowherd men, of course, were none other than Krishna. Uh, Krishna had come as cowherd men and he abducted his own queens. Uh, because nobody can touch uh, what belongs to Krishna. Nobody can take away. But through this, Krishna humbled Arjuna. Because Krishna can tolerate anything but pride. Even if a person is very sinful, committing thousands of sins every day, Krishna will still forgive. But uh, false pride is something that he cannot tolerate. He can tolerate everything else. And to the degree we are dear to him, to that very degree, he will rescue us. So false pride can always be avoided by remembering this one thing. Yes, we will achieve uh, so many things in life and we might be able to accomplish uh, wonderful tasks but internally we remain convinced that whatever we are able to do and whatever we have is by Krishna's grace and nothing else and if we uh, live in this consciousness then Krishna will uh, empower us more and more to do more. It's like a father. He gives some money to his children and when he sees the children are misusing the money, then he stops giving it to them. But if he sees somebody is actually utilizing the money properly and uh, is being taken care of nicely, then he'll give him more and more and more. And at the same time when the child is respectful and grateful. So all we need is the shift in consciousness. That's it. And that is true humility. True humility doesn't mean externally somebody is uh, sitting in one corner and saying, I am nothing, I am useless. That could be depression also. That could be uh, an attempt to seek attention. Or that could be subtle lust, desire for recognition. So, who is actually humble, Krishna knows and Guru knows. And the person himself would know if he has the consciousness that everything is Krishna's. I am Krishna's and everything that I have is also Krishna's. Everything is by Krishna's grace. This is true humility. And this is the ultimate uh, conclusion of all knowledge. And this is the, to come to this point is the goal of all kinds of austerities, scriptural study, uh, visiting all the holy tirthas, performing all kinds of rituals, giving all kinds of charity, so, penances performed. If all this does not bring us to this point where we realize our insignificance, then there is some problem somewhere. And if somebody achieves this consciousness, then, the, uh, then he is understood to have studied all the scriptures, visited all the holy places, done all kinds of charity, penances, austerity. And if we pray for this consciousness, then Krishna will certainly bless us with it. We might not have it at the moment, but if that is the aspiration, because Krishna uh, empowers or facilitates us according to our desire. And this is the aspiration. And this is something which Mother Kunti is teaching through her prayers, through her own example. Fully convinced 
she is not thinking my my sons were so powerful I mean, all of their opulence and everything that they have achieved is by your grace and now you are living our kingdom would be bereft of auspiciousness and it is a fact only when krishna is present uh, there is some auspiciousness in life all the auspiciousness for example our body uh, we think very we are very attractive and uh, we accomplish so much but that spark the soul which itself is a part of krishna when that spark leaves what happens to the body it loses its attractiveness as soon as the part and parcel of krishna the soul leaves the body the body becomes untouchable if we touch it we have to take bath within 3 days it begins to disintegrate so krishna when he withdraws his mercy we are nothing and only by his mercy we are everything hari krishna thank you so much श्रीमद्भागवत की जय शिल प्रभुपाद की जय